Hello and welcome to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Big Italy 42. He's Spencer Limbach at Spencer underscore JL. And we're talking about tonight's slate. Of course, Wednesdays, as they always are, we've got an early slate, a late slate. So um, we've got some decent pitching on the mound. We also have a course field game once again. So here comes, you know, the people that love the course field games and stack them in their cash games, and then the people who hate the course field games and don't play cash games. So whichever side of the fence you're on, Tonight's going to be an interesting night. We also have some uh, interesting weather in Chicago once again with the uh, the wind blowing out at Wrigley Field. It's a significant amount. Nine run total there despite John Lester being on the mound. So definitely two games you want to get some exposure to. So as we're looking at pitchers here, you got John Lester in that wind. I would normally like him in, as a GPP play, but I'm not a big fan of him with this wind blowing out and some of these, uh, this suddenly healthy Detroit team. Um, it seems like, despite the fact that the Rays have been hitting left-handed pitching really well, that Dallas Keuchel is the guy you're going to want tonight. $10,900, legitimate ace, but hasn't really been priced like it. And it's not a super prohibitive price tag. So I think he's probably your safest option if you're going to be paying um, above 10 k today. Yeah, I think uh, yeah he kind of falls into that rule by default because, you know, as you said with Lester and that win, you know, being problematic against him. Um, you're looking more at Keiko, especially since Corey Kluber has a park downgrade um, from a pitcher perspective in Boston tonight, and he's priced way up at 12K. Um, I don't know if you can necessarily go there on the road against the Boston team that's heating up. So I think Keiko, in a pretty decent matchup against Tampa Bay at home, uh, reasonable money line there. He's a minus 190 favorite, which is... Um, one of the highest of tonight, Mark Burley is actually a minus 200, but um, significantly less strikeout upside for Burley. So, um, yeah, I think Keuchel is the top guy if you're paying up. Otherwise, if you want someone a little bit cheaper, I think it has to be Garcia of the Cardinals. Um, 8.5K, another reasonable money line. Um, granted, a matchup against the Giants isn't the best for a left-handed pitcher because you have guys like Posey, Duffy, Maxwell, um, Pence, all those right-handed hitters, pretty capable. But, um, you know, at home, reasonable money line. I, I, I think that the Cardinals could pull out another win here. Um, he's one of the more obvious of the mid-range picks here at, at pitcher. Yeah, and I mean, he's been really good, especially in his last few starts. So it seems like he's probably your best bet there in the middle. And then everybody else here kind of seems like a GPP play. One guy that's interesting, Robbie Ray. Big time letdown last time out against an Atlanta team that's bad against lefties. Didn't have a single strikeout, but he had eight strikeouts in three of his five games before that. It's a Pittsburgh team that strikes out quite a bit against left-handed pitching. I believe they're uh, fifth in the league in strikeout, or worst, fifth worst in the league, I should say, in strikeout rate against lefties. So at $6,600, I think he's an interesting tournament option. It is a pitcher's park there in Pittsburgh today, and they've been putting up some runs. So, you know, he should have a fairly low ownership. Outside of that, um, Ubaldo Jimenez, because he's facing a struggling Mets team, he's in play, but he's a guy you don't feel great about for tournaments. Um, I mean, he's, he's so hit or miss. There's, there's a lot of ups and a lot of downs with him. Really nobody else that really stands out. I mean, you get guys like Nate Carnes, who have pitched pretty well, but he doesn't pitch deep into games. Um, doesn't have a lot of strikeout upside. I think his strikeout upside will get a little bit of a bump facing Houston today, but you also don't like the park factors, at the fact that it is at Minute Maid today. Yeah, I think Ubaldo is a tournament pick in that range if you're looking for someone of that nature. But um, I would rather just bump up to Garcia for 600 extra dollars and maybe downgrade another position. Um, that's that's my preference for tonight. Yeah, I'm completely on board with you there. So, All right, we'll go ahead and move on here to catcher where um, a guy that you want to target in these situations, but not against a lefty. Kyle Schwarber looked up his numbers against lefties. He's been terrible, 43% strikeout rate. So um, as enticing as it may be, no thanks for me. I'll go ahead and pass there. I like Wellington Castillo against a lefty as a tournament play at $3,400. But I think your cash game play, at least for me, it's got to be Russell Martin at $2,700 against Adam Morgan. Um, he hasn't been particularly good, but Blue Jays, as always, highest. Well, not as always, but... As we see a lot, high team total, um, decent ballpark, obviously no Rogers Center, but Citizens Bank certainly a, a fine venue for them, and he's just far too cheap for, I mean, even just being in the heart of that order. 
Yeah, um, the two guys I have at the top there are Wilson Ramos of Washington and Russell Martin, as you mentioned. Uh, Ramos is 2,900 righty-lefty matchup in Colorado against Jorge De La Rosa. So, I mean, he's another guy who's been struggling lately, but the matchup price line up favorably for a bounce back here. So um, you have to kind of like him. Otherwise, Francisco Cervelli is kind of a sneaky pick. I like in that same price range. He's 2,700. Has been hitting the ball pretty well lately. Righty lefty matchup against Robbie Ray. Um, and Ray has a 354 Woba against righties this season. So not a bad little matchup there. And he's someone I think is going to be a little bit under owned or uh, less owned than the likes of uh, Wilson Ramos or Russell Martin. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, that's a good call there. So a uh, nice, nice little swerve there because. Martin probably will be a uh, pretty pretty popular play tonight, I would imagine. Um, nobody else that really stands out a whole lot here at catcher. Uh, James McCann, though, one other. The other McCann, as you put it earlier when we were talking. Um, we mentioned the wind blowing out. You obviously don't love the matchup against John Lester, but he's put up good numbers against Southpaws this season. So at $2,300, I think he's probably, probably the best punt option as far as the really cheap guys. Yep. First base options. Uh, your BVP special today is Miguel Cabrera against John Lester. He's got big time numbers against him in his career. Um, to put him in here, I just lost him. Oh, here we go. 14 for 25 with eight walks, two strikeouts, five extra base hits. Obviously, it's not all BVP play. Miguel Cabrera should have had a homer last night. You got to love a guy with this much power to all parts of the field at at Wrigley today. So for me, he's my favorite overall option on tonight's slate. Yeah, um, obviously you're going to have to work things around to blend him in there, probably lessening your exposure to the Coors game, but that's not necessarily a bad strategy tonight. As we said, this Detroit um, Cubs matchup has a 9 over under that could even rise um, a little more before game time. So um, Miguel Cabrera, those right-handed Detroit bats, don't shy away from them. Uh, They're a fly ball hitting team, and as we know, those fly balls will carry in Wrigley Field. So, um, yeah, definitely not shying away from the Tigers tonight. Um, Otherwise, Edwin Encarnacion, righty-lefty matchup against Adam Morgan tonight. You have to like that. Morgan has a 358 Woba against righties this season. Um, So, yeah, I mean, all the the Toronto righties are in play once again. Granted, they're pretty pricey, so, you know, just kind of take that into consideration. Otherwise, a little bit cheaper pick, Ryan Zimmerman um, against Jorge De La Rosa in Coors Field, 3.9K. Not a terribly expensive price considering, I mean, it's expensive for him, but you expect a little bit of a markup going into Coors Field. So I think he's kind of in that range with uh, Encarnacion and, say, Paul Goldschmidt um, for a cheaper price point. So I might be leaning his way for cash games. Yeah, and I don't blame you there. I mean, we did see a huge explosion last night. And then the other guy kind of in between those two guys, actually, is Joey Votto, $4,100. Jeremy Guthrie, as we know, one of the worst in all of baseball against left-handed batters. 397 Woba this year. And, I mean, he's been terrible against lefties his entire career. So you like Joey Votto there as well. And then uh, cheap options, Carlos Santana against Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly is just a bad pitcher. I want pieces of any decent hitter I can from Cleveland side. And... Uh, that's really it for me. And you can look at guys like uh, Justin Smoke as a cheaper option if you want to get a cheap piece of Toronto if he's in the lineup. Um, one other guy, maybe CJ Crone, because Jeff Samarja has been really bad recently, and Crone has homered in uh, two of his last three games. So those are the cheap guys I'm looking at at first. Yep. All right, second base options. Uh, Jason Kipnis is back off the DL. You assume he's probably going to be in the lineup tonight. Had a pinch hit last night. Um, Went 0 for 1. None of that actually matters. Mention how bad Joe Kelly is. So I love Jason Kipnis at what's now all of a sudden a cheap price tag for him at 3500 Was one of the better hitters in, uh, one of the more consistent hitters, I should say, in baseball over the final month before his injury. So you like him. Anthony Rendon, another one of those guys. Continues to struggle, but he's in Coors Field against the lefty. That's been his preferred, you know, platoon advantage throughout his career, obviously. So... He's certainly in play. Maybe not a guy you have a whole lot of faith in, but a guy you certainly need to consider. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be Rendon for me just because I, I don't see many second basemen that I like so much tonight. Um, like you said, Kipnis, maybe if he's back in the lineup, but there's a fair amount of risk there as well. Um, just you know, not knowing what to expect 
uh, coming off of that injury, but you, have, you like the price point, definitely. Um, Brandon Phillips against Guthrie, not a horrible play, 3.1K, but I, I think I'd rather go with Rendon for more upside in that matchup in Coors um, for $300 more. Otherwise, if you need someone on the cheaper side of things, just a filler, um, Colton Wong against Matt Cain, 2.6K. Um, Wong has been hitting in the top half of the lineup, resuming that role after he kind of got bumped down in the past month. But um, he's one of the better picks that I see in the value range. So um, just someone to consider or fall back to if you need the salary cap. Yeah, and one of the guys, similar situation there, but, but he is in course field. Danny Espinosa, $3,000. Uh, had a couple doubles last night, solid performance there. So, you know, if you want a, a cheaper piece of that pie then i don't think he's a bad way to go either yeah make sure he's in the lineup too because he's he's someone that kind of gets shuffled around as well so i mean yeah if he's in the lineup that is another good what good play uh cheap play to get some exposure to coors field tonight yeah yeah that's a good point because he was the guy who was an everyday starter when rendon was out but now that rendon's back uh yeah definitely double check that one uh third base options you got two really pricey options that you have to like um josh donaldson against the lefty anywhere gotta love him hit all he did was hit two homers last night. Um, everyone who won a lot of money last night had Josh Donaldson on their teams, it seemed like. So, um, Nolan Arenado, $4,900. Expensive. You don't love the matchup against Strasburg, but Strasburg's been plenty messy in uh, better situations. So, um, he's been fine since his return, but I'm, I'm not afraid to target him at Coors Field today. And then, probably my next favorite guy is going to be Chris Bryant. Another one of those guys in that big total at, uh, at Wrigley. Um he didn't find the seats last night, but the kind of power he's got against the lefty today, um, wouldn't be surprised to see him have a really big game. And $3,400 seems far too cheap for him tonight. Yeah, there's a lot of good third basemen today, as you said, Donaldson, Arenado up at the top. But um, then as you work into the mid-range, you have Chris Bryant, uh, Todd Frazier against Jeremy Guthrie in Great American. Um, that's probably more of a tournament play than anything, but still a uh, high upside one at that. Um, and then you have the story of Yanel Escobar coming off 15.75 fantasy points last night. Um, Righty-lefty matchup in Coors again. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I mean, there's a lot of different options that you could go here at third base, so I don't think you have to have him. But I don't think he's necessarily a bad pick again. Um, obviously, you're not expecting him to replicate that performance, but... I mean, it, it really depends on how many Washington bats you want, what you can work in. So I, I think maybe Chris Bryant holds a little more merit, but it's it's pretty close between him and Escobar for a similar salary. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't mind that at all because it is it is a fine spot there now. So not a guy that you seem like you have a lot of power, but like you said, it definitely amplifies the power there. Um, Aramis Ramirez at twenty eight hundred dollars is an interesting cheaper option against Robbie Ray. Um, He's finally been hitting a decent amount recently. Only two multi-hit games in his last uh, nine, it looks like. But, you know, that's a Pirates team that when they get it going, they do have some guys individually who hit lefties pretty well. So I think if you have to save some money, then you're going sub-3K. He's really the only guy that stands out to me as a decent play. Yeah, and then if you need a tournament filler, like you love every other position, you're looking for a minimum salary guy, Mike Mustak is in Great American Ballpark uh, facing Sampson of the Reds, kind of like that, even though he's hitting down in the lineup, he's bare minimum, and I don't really see any other third baseman in that range um, that really warrant any attention whatsoever, so he is your cheap guy if you need some in in uh, at third base tonight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely with you there, and then outfield options, Bryce Harper, seems like the strategy last night was just pitch around him, and that gave him a nice high floor, uh, he walked four times, and he scored four runs. So if they put up a big number again tonight, you got to imagine he has a nice high floor. If he gets a pitch to hit, probably, you know, you don't love the lefty-lefty matchup, but Bryce Harper still has tons of power against lefties. So um, not a guy I would be playing in cash games, certainly, but um, a guy that's certainly in play in tournaments. Jose Bautista, big disappointment last night, 0 for 5, but gets a lefty today and not a very good one in Adam Morgan, so you got to like him. And then looking at your other cores bats, Carlos Gonzalez left last night's game with knee inflammation. You can't really assume that he's going to be playing tonight with knee inflammation, um, especially in a tough matchup. So maybe he sits. 
And, and no nothing reason. to play for. Yeah, exactly. There's really no reason <laughs> to uh, risk him. So maybe you assume a guy like Kyle Parker at men's salary, who not a particularly good player, but homered last night. Should be in the lineup, you would assume, if Carr goes out. Probably going to bat around seventh again. But men's salary, if you want a cheap piece, that's your cheapest piece you're going to find at Coors Field. Um, I might be off here, but did we skip shortstop? We did skip shortstop. Okay. I, I didn't know if, if I was, like, talking about third base when you were talking about shortstop, and then I screwed it up. But no, okay. let's, cut back to thir- let's cut back to short, and then we'll go back to okay. uh, outfield. All right, that, that works. All right, go ahead. Who's your favorite at shortstop? I think it's Troy Tulowitzki, even though he hasn't been very good lately. Um, Righty-lefty matchup against Adam Morgan. Um, as you said, all the Jays bats are in play tonight. Um, and, you know, Philly really isn't that bad of a ballpark. I mean, as you said, it's no Rogers Center, but still, you know, above average park factor there for uh, Tulo. And really what it comes down to with him is he and Ian Desmond are kind of similar in what to expect tonight in terms of upside whatnot. They're at the same price, and Tulo's just a better player, a more reliable player in a better lineup. I mean, obviously Desmond has the park factor um, going his way. He had a great night last night, so I wouldn't rule him out necessarily. I just feel more confident in Tulo. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you there. I mean, he's he's a more consistently good hitter throughout his career than Ian Desmond has been, so um, I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Jung Ho Gong, another guy, $3,300 hits lefties really well. Homered again last night. Certainly got to consider him. Um, then as you're looking at cheap guys, Johnny Peralta hasn't been very good recently, but neither has Matt Cain. $2,400 for him. Seems too cheap, but, I mean, I don't know that at this point maybe you're just chasing some points. Either way, another guy who's been really good the last two times he started at least, so if he's in the lineup, Marvin Gonzalez at $2,300. Uh, Nate Carnes has been fine, but 2300 for a guy who... Um, and his last two starts has five hits, a double, a triple, and a homer. Um, I don't mind him if you're punting the position. Yeah, also, uh, Alcides Escobar sitting down there, 2.3K, always a default punt, batting leadoff for Kansas City. Um, don't really hate that if you need some savings. Otherwise, you have Jose Reyes at 3.4K, and he's another guy I don't really know what to do with. He had a great game, 4 for 5 last night, home run, a um, couple of runs scored. But I'm just not expecting big things from him moving forward. Um, I think that was more of an outlier performance than anything. Um, so I'm not particularly sold. I know there's going to be some people that chase points. I don't think he's a horrible play at that. But I would just rather, you know, bump up to too low. I think you get more upside that way um, for, you know, just $600 more. So I would rather go that route tonight just to kind of address that point. Yeah, plus, I mean, he he just so happens to have Josh Donaldson and Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion behind him. And, that always helps. Yeah, that's that's not a bad <laughs> spot to be in. Um, jumping back to the outfield now, Mike Trout just continues to drop in price. He hasn't been good recently, but he's still Mike Trout, and he's only $4,600, which just seems ridiculously low for, obviously, as good as he is. Um, you got to like Michael Brantley at $4,100 against Joe Kelly. you got to like everyone against Joe Kelly, but... Certainly liking him. And then uh, as you're looking for some other uh, cheaper options, I guess, you get guys like um, Gerardo Parra, I think, is a good tournament option. Uh, $3,600. You're not trying to pick on Noah Syndergaard, but it's Camden Yards. We've seen DeGrom didn't struggle, but he didn't have a uh, ace type of performance. We saw Sonny Gray struggle there a couple of games ago. So it's not a good environment for pitchers, and I think people will be off par because of the matchup. But he's been mashing right-handed pitching this season. Yeah, um, and then looking at some other cheaper plays in the outfield, you have uh, Chris Colaballo, another righty-lefty situation for Toronto. Don't mind that at 3.2K. Um, and Starling Marte in another righty-lefty matchup is only 3K. So he's been kind of struggling lately, slowly turning things around. But that's just far too cheap of a price point for her, his talent. Um, and then another tournament pick, J.D. Martinez. Yep. As we said, um, there in Wrigley with the wind blowing out, a guy who just only hits fly balls pretty much. Um, and he can hit pretty much every pitch. He's a good low ball hitter. Um, I mean, things are just looking pretty good for Martinez tonight um, with power upside 3.4K. You have to like that price point as well. So he's a guy I'm going to keep on my radar. Otherwise, looking at another Tiger for even cheaper, you have Rajay Davis. 
who will likely be leading off tonight for Detroit. You don't love the matchup necessarily against Lester for hitting purposes, because uh, Lester is a pretty decent pitcher, but um, Davis does have a little bit of home run upside if he can get one in the air there in Wrigley. And if he reaches base, he's probably going to steal a couple against Lester because, as we know, Lester, for some reason, even though being a lefty, he can't hold anymore on first base, which is kind of ridiculous. But, yeah, he has two stolen base upside there. Um, and he's one of the better, you know, near-minimum salary outfielders that I yeah. see tonight. I don't really see anyone else down there that I'm, I'm willing to look at besides, as you mentioned, maybe Kyle Parker or someone like that. But, um, yeah, that's that's really it for cheap outfielders. Yeah, and then a couple more guys in the middle. Jay Bruce, $3,000 left against Jeremy Guthrie. He's been horrible over the last few weeks, but um, certainly has power upside, not a cash game play at all. Did we mention Joey Votto earlier? Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay, good. I, I just you I know want to I make can't the point that Joey Votto is a great play tonight because yes. – if we didn't see that, we would probably be doing you a disservice. Absolutely, yeah. He's he's got to be a top, at least top five hitter overall tonight, yeah. if not more. Um, Dexter Fowler still too cheap at twenty nine hundred. Um, another one of those Chicago bats that can kind of do it all tonight against the lefty. So you got to like him. And uh, like you said, not a whole lot of other cheap guys. Michael Taylor's twenty seven hundred dollars. If you wanted to get a piece of him, if he's in the lineup, um, a cheaper piece of course field, but a guy you don't feel great about. Um, really nobody else is standing out to me here in this uh, mid to cheap range. Anybody else you got? Not really. I mean, you already said Dexter Fowler. Um, you could go Jorge Soler, more of a tournament spinoff of that, or you could kind of combine them in a Cubs stack. Um, as we know, he has some, some decent power to take uh, advantage of that win. So that's another guy I'd keep on my tournament radar. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all the great content at dailyfantasycafe.com.